Hi everyone. I'm just going to give it a couple more minutes or a minute or so just to make sure everyone's joined the live session and then I'll uh, run through talking about our programmes here at South Shields Marine School. So I'll kick off then. Uh, before I start, if you've got any questions or anything like that, pop them in the, the chat box there to the side and I'll try and answer them throughout the session as much as I can. Uh, just any questions you like, anything, just pop them in there. So I'll start by introducing myself. My name's John Milner and I'm the head of school for Deck Officer Certification here at South Shields Marine School. So that means I'm responsible for all the deck programs. So deck programs are navigation programs, if you like. So on board a ship, there are three main categories of prospective officer. So you have a, a deck or navigation officer, an engineering officer, and an electronic technical officer. So I look after all the deck or navigation programs. So what a deck officer is, that's mainly the guy on the bridge who makes sure that the ship gets from A to B as safely as possible. So navigating the ship, making sure the ship's not going to hit any other ships, any land, etc. But we also have lots of other duties apart from just on the bridge navigating. So we've got to look after the cargo. Once it's on board, it's our responsibility. Uh, make sure it's stored in the same place, it's secured correctly. If there's any dangerous goods in the right place, any refrigerated cargo, any special cargo, it's in the correct place. Got to make sure it's okay whilst it's on board. That could be passengers on a passenger ship, oil on an oil tanker, containers on a container ship, cars on a car ferry. So there's lots of different ship types out there. So lots of different cargo types. So I'm going to talk to you about the deck programs. So we run two main sponsored cadet programs and we run something called a pre-cadet program here at South Shields Marine School. So a pre-cadet program is before you're sponsored by a shipping company. So it's mainly for school leavers. We've developed the program in conjunction with shipping companies and industry professionals. And it's a great opportunity for school leavers who are still not quite sure that a career at sea is for them or career in the Merchant Navy is for them. And they can join our pre-cadet program it's a one-year programme and they get a good taste for what a sponsored cadetship programme is like. If they decide it's not for them, they can leave there and go off and pursue other careers. And if they decide, yes, it's great, that's for them, then we will help them get sponsorship with a shipping company or training provider. We'll talk to you a little bit more about the pre-cadet programme. Like I said, we have it's 30 weeks. There are two intakes, one in September and one in February of each academic year. So it's 30 weeks, it's not all in the classroom. So yes, there's a lot in the classroom, a lot of academics, just to get the use, give you a taste of what academics will be like as a sponsored cadet. So classroom-based study, we teach you or give you a taste for what navigation's like. So a little bit of chart work, plotting ships positions, plotting courses, how we plot the courses, what course should we plot, a little bit of passage planning, making sure we're not going to hit the land. Uh, we touch on a little bit of celestial navigation, so teaching by the, the navigation by the stars and the sun and things like that, which is great. That's one of the reasons why I decided to join the Merchant Navy myself. I was really interested in celestial navigation. And I'd heard a story about Captain Bly, the mutiny on the bounty fame, and he got cast adrift in a lifeboat with several of his colleagues after a mutiny. And he managed in the middle of the Pacific and he managed to navigate his way to safety over 3,000 or so miles. And I thought that was fantastic. And all he had was a little book of tables and his section so, and his knowledge, obviously. But I thought that was fantastic. So that's, I decided then that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to learn how to navigate by the stars and the sun and things like that. So the pre-cadet programme, 30 weeks, 
academics we touch on, like I said, navigation, chart work. We look at a bit of ship stability. So what ship stability is, is making sure the ship's not going to capsize. It's not too top heavy. Don't put too much cargo on one side than the other. Obviously, it's going to list over then. We also look at ship construction, the basics of how ships are built, things like that, different materials that we use in ship construction. And we also look at cargo operations. So very basic cargo operations to make sure, you know, the safety aspects of loading different types of cargoes. We look at oil cargoes. You imagine there's lots of different types of oil, uh, containerized cargo, bulk cargo. So what a bulk cargo is, is anything that's not in a packet. If you imagine pouring coal into a ship or pouring grain into a ship. That's bulk cargo. So we look at all those topics in the, in the pre cadet ship just to give you a taster of what it's like as a sponsored cadet. Like I said, it's not all in the classroom. We do try and get to the River Tyne. We've got the River Tyne and Port of Tyne here, very, very close by. And we've got excellent links with the, with the port and the river. And we try and get you on as many in a perfect world. Obviously, it's a bit more difficult at the moment. But by September, hopefully, things will have opened up. We'll try and get you down to the river. Lots of ship visits, lots of port visits. So when we talk about ship construction, we can actually go to a repair yard and see all the materials that have been talked about in the classroom. Um, get on ship visits, come visit the bridge, come visit the, the cargo areas so you can see what we've been talking about in the classroom. We also try and get you in our ship simulators as much as possible. So we try and teach you a little bit of voyage and what we call rule of the road. So a bit like your highway code for ships, if you like, which way to go and two ships are heading head on and things like that, which way to turn, how to avoid each other. We try and get you in the simulators so we can put a lot of that theory into practice in the simulators. And it's great fun in the simulators. You can crash and it's great. Uh, we also send you down our marine and offshore safety training centre to do uh, a little bit of basic firefighting, sea survival, things like that, just to give you a taste of what you need to learn when you're at sea. So that's our pre-cadet programme. It's absolutely brilliant. We've had excellent feedback from students and shipping companies alike. Like I said, we help you get sponsorship throughout it. So we'll help you write your CVs. We'll help you write your covering letters, anything like that, to try and hopefully get yourself sponsorship after you've completed the pre-cadet. So it's a great opportunity. I'd also like to talk about our two main sponsored cadet ship programs in the in the deck department so they're very similar i'll just go through the first one which is an advanced certificate or an advanced diploma sponsored cadet ship route so what a sponsored cadet is it means you're sponsored by a shipping company or a, a training provider so they're going to pay for your college theory your college course or your college courses and they're also going to pay you a wage whilst you're sponsored with them throughout the, the tenure of the of the cadetship, which is usually about three years. So the advanced certificate or advanced diploma cadetship is, is three years long, over five phases, uh, split between college and sea. So phase one of that is at the college. Uh, it's usually about 14, 15 weeks in that time. We'll give you the basics in the theory, a little bit like the theory in the pre-cadet ship, just the basics to make sure you're safe when you get on a ship in phase two. But we'll also send you down the main offshore safety training centre to do your what we call basic STCW courses. So you're not allowed to join a ship without these courses. So that's your firefighting. Make sure you, you know what to do. If there's a fire on board a ship, how to put it out, what extinguishers to use, etc., etc. We also send you on a sea survival course. So that's basically what to do. Hopefully it'll never happen if the ship thinks. So what to do if you find yourselves in the water, how to put a life jacket on, how to ride a life raft, how to get in a life raft, things like that. We've got a great environmental pool at our offshore safety training centre. It's fantastic. Great wave machine, thunder, lightning, you know, it gets dark. It's absolutely brilliant experience. Same with the, the firefighting course. We've got two mock-ups of sort of ships slash offshore installations. Uh, get you in there, set the place on fire. Hopefully you can put the fire out. Absolutely brilliant teamwork. 
some of the best experiences of your life, especially as a as a young cadet. Absolutely brilliant. There's a few other basic safety training courses we do. So first aid, uh, personal safety, social responsibility, it's a bit like health and safety. Make sure you're wearing your hard hat, safety boots, things like that. Designated security duties and something called enclosed space entry. So that's basically you don't want to be going in a space that hasn't got enough oxygen in it. The correct procedures to use for that, things like that once you've got on a ship. As you can imagine a ship, it's quite a dangerous environment, so we need to make sure you're safe before you get on board. So that's all about phase one. We're making sure you're safe enough to step on board a ship ready for phase two. So phase one, about 15 weeks all in all. In all. So you start here in the September or you start here in the February, and about 15 weeks later, you finish phase one and you're off away to sea on phase two. Phase two is generally about six months. You don't spend all that time on a ship. So that six months is that phase length. It's split between on the ship and leave. Uh, depending on what shipping company you work for, you might find you're away for four weeks, six weeks, two weeks, or you might be deep sea where it's a bit longer, maybe two or three months for a trip. Great experience. I remember my first trip to sea, absolutely brilliant. Heading down to Australia, New Zealand, the Far East, absolute brilliant experience. Never, never ever forget it. I could talk for ages about it, and I might do yet to run out of things to stay here. So once you've done your first sea phase, you'll be carrying out practical tasks. We'll give you what we call a, a training record book to fill in with some tasks in. So we'll get you to complete some tasks whilst on board. Then you return here for phase three. It's a college phase. It's about six months where you will then do some academics under the advanced certificate in nautical science. So a little bit higher level than the academics you did in phase one. But don't forget now you've got that little bit more practical experience to help you out with the theory behind that. So that's about six months. At the end of that phase, you will do a signals exam. So your Morse code, yes, you still need to learn Morse code and signal flags and things like that. You might think, God, Bennett, do you still have to learn that? Yes, very important. If you, you've seen all the Terminator films, end of the world, nuclear holocaust, how do they communicate with each other at the end? Morse code. I didn't know either that so many people knew it, but you'll be in a great position once the Terminator comes. Judgment day. So just think of that. There's a positive there. So at the end of phase three, signals, certificates, an MCA, Maritime and Coast Guard Agency exam in Morse code, sending, receiving, signal flags, things like that. And you'll also sit what we call our MCA external examinations in navigation and stability. So to get your certificate of competency, Officer of the Watch, certificate of competency at the end of the sponsored cadetship, you need to pass all the academics, so all the short courses, and you also need to pass two MCA exams, which those I'm talking about in phase three. So one is in navigation, and one's in stability and operations. And to get your certificate of competency, you also need to pass a one-on-one -on -one oral exam with an examiner, a bit like this. I'm here talking to you. He's there talking back, asking you questions on everything you've learned in the three years of your cadetship. But that's not till phase five, so you've got plenty of time to practice for that. So end of phase three, back away to C for your second C phase, where you complete all the tasks in your training record book. Hopefully you come back in phase five, all that completed, absolutely brilliant. The second C phase is a little bit longer because you need to complete all your C training then. So generally it's about 10 to 12 months. Again, not all on a ship. You're not on a ship for 12 months. That would drive you crazy. Uh, so it's broke up between C trips and leave. So back here in phase five, uh, literally phase five is quite short, about 12 weeks, three months. And all we've got to do then is prepare you for your oral exam and also some extra short courses. So we have a simulator course that you need to go on as part of the qualification. So four weeks in the simulator on our bridge simulators here at South Shields Marine School. We've got some of the best in the country, if not the world. Uh, on the simulators there, practicing exercises, collision avoidance, practical rule of the road, all the things you would have done, hopefully, in knowledge of our college and at sea. Uh, uh, electronic chart course, lots of things like that in the simulator course. It says four weeks, 
Then you've got a two-week radio course. So it's all about communications with the ship, the shore. If the ship's in distress, how do you communicate that with the shore? How do you get help? If other ships in distress, how do you communicate with them? Things like that. And we also send you on medical first aid and an advanced firefighting in phase five. So a little bit longer firefighting course, a little bit more in depth. And medical first aid, a little bit more than just elementary first aid. A little bit more than just putting plasters on a coat, things like that. So we're going a bit deeper. Don't forget, we're on a ship. We can't phone 999. We can't get the paramedics here. We can't get the fire brigade here. We've got to look after ourselves. So that's why we are so well trained on our ships. So that's the H, uh, the advanced certificate, advanced diploma, cadetship. Again, three years, five phases. You come out at the end of it with your academic qualification, which is an advanced certificate, and also your professional qualification, which is your certificate of competency as an officer of the watch, unlimited. So any size ship, and that can trade anywhere in the world. Brilliant qualification to have. Uh, we also have the what we call a foundation degree, sponsored cadetship. Very similar, three-year program, over five phases. Uh, a little bit different. The only difference between that and the advanced certificate is it's a foundation degree, the academics. It's a little bit higher level. Uh, but phase one, phase three, phase five, more or less the same. It's just the academics that have changed. So in phase one, same short courses. We just do year one of the foundation degree in marine operations. Similar subjects. Navigation, cargo work, marine law management, uh, bridge watch keeping, subjects like that. Wait to see in phase two, about the same length as a normal six months. Back, phase three is year two of foundation degree. Uh, similar subjects, but this time at, at the next level up to level five qualification, which is sort of second year of a degree qualification level. And then that way to see, complete your 12 month seat time. That's what you need in total. It's 12 months for an officer watch qualification if you're following the sponsored cadetship route. It's 12 months. It should be 36 months, but it's reduced to 12 months because you're following a Merchant Navy Trading Board approved trading scheme. You're filling in your trading record with last uh, Qualifications to get on these routes. So the pre cadetship. Ideally, what you need leaving school is GCSEs at grade four or C and above, preferably in maths, English, and physical science uh, as a minimum. Uh, there's quite a lot of maths, not a lot of maths that's difficult, but there's a little bit of maths. You imagine the navigation, it's uh, lots of trigonometry and things like that, rearranging formulas, but we, we teach you and we, we will get you up to the level required we'll just dive in there there's a load of maths get on and do it we support you through getting up to the required level and it's not all maths theory exciting stuff meteorology cargo work things like that so ideally for the pre-cadet chip is gcse's grades four or c equivalent or above maths english and physical science for the advanced certificate sponsored cadet ship some shipping companies differ on their entry requirements just depends on the sponsoring company or shipping company but very generally speaking it's grade five or above to get on the advanced certificate they may accept grade four and they do accept the pre-cadetship qualification so if you've done a pre-cadetship here you will get on the hnc or foundation degree cadetship straight away if they accept you after the interview with the shipping company by the, the pre cadet programs, an excellent program to get on. For the foundation degree sponsored cadetship program, is grade five or B, or more again, maths, English, physical science, or equivalent. So it's a little bit higher for the foundation degree. And the only reason for that is the academics are a little bit higher level. Uh, like I said, you come out with a very similar, well, the same professional qualification, Officer Watch Unlimited. But the academic qualification you come up with, the foundation degree is obviously a foundation degree, which is a level five qualification. In the advanced certificate, is a, it's a level four qualification. Brilliant. No real difference other than one's slightly higher level. And one will stand you in better stead when you're trying to get both of your chief mates or further for qualifications later on. 
to be perfectly honest, they're both both excellent connections. To be honest. I think I've finished my spiel. If anyone's got any questions, whack them in the, the chat box there to the side, and I'll try and answer as many as I uh, possibly can. Both questions coming in. So there's one there. Well, I think I've answered it. So the minimum qualifications, yes. So for the pre cadet chip is, like I said, grade four or C. But we will interview you prior to coming on the programme. It's not just you turn up and get on. We'll interview everybody just to see if we've got that base knowledge uh, about the maritime industry. If you haven't, that's fine. Yeah, that's what we're here for is to, is to teach you all that sort of thing. So on an individual basis, we'll treat each student individually. If you haven't got your grades yet, GCSE grade four and above, we can support you during the pre cadetship to get higher grades. So you can resit your GCSE maths and English while studying for the pre cadetship So just because you haven't got a grade four doesn't mean that's the end of the world. So please still apply, get in touch, and we will discuss your options with you. So you can still get on the pre-cadetship, even if you haven't got a grade four, we will support you through resitting your English or your maths. Or likewise, if you've got a grade four and you want to try and get a higher grade GSSE during the pre-cadetship, we can support you through that. So it's not the end of the world if you don't get your GCSEs. Fantastic programme, set you up for getting that sponsored cadetship. And who wouldn't want a sponsored cadetship? I always think when you're at school or at sixth form and you're looking for your options of what careers am I interested in, I was the same. I was at sixth form doing A-levels in the GCSEs that I'd got A's in, you know. And don't think I was a straight-A student. Yes, I got A's in a few GCSEs, but not the ones I needed to get A's in. So not in English, not in maths. I got B's. And C's in those, but uh, I thought, well, I've got an A in geography, I'll try an A level in that, same with history, and believe it or not, in German. So I was doing my A levels, not really knowing uh, what I wanted to do, and I come across the Merchant Navy, sponsored cadets, and I thought, oh, that sounds interesting, it's the same length of time as a degree. Yes, you don't come out with a degree at the end of it, but you come out with a, a very good academic qualification which is great for going on to the higher education routes. And you also got the chance to get a job at the end of it. So the sponsored company sponsors you through all your training, practical training, theory training at college. They get you on a ship, get you that practical training at sea. They pay you a wage, so you're earning while you're learning. Don't get that at university. University, you've got to go and find yourself a job in a shop or a job in a bar. So I thought, absolutely brilliant, you know. I don't have to get any loans or anything like that, student loans. They're going to pay for me training all the way through. I'm getting a wage. I haven't got that to worry about. And then at the end of it, I've got a really good chance of getting a job. So I got a job straight away with the same company that sponsored me when I was a cadet. And I would say about 60%, 70% of our cadets go on to jobs with the sponsoring companies that they're sponsored with. It's not always guaranteed, but... The guys here, the staff at the college will have got excellent links in the industry. They'll help you try and get a job at the end of your sponsored get you if you haven't been taken on by your sponsor. So it's a fantastic opportunity. So I stayed with my shipping company uh, once I qualified all the way through. I come back here to South Shield to do my chief mate qualification. So it's my next level. Uh, Chief Mate Unlimited qualifications. Come back, did them here. Went away back to sea with the same company. And then I come back and did my Master Mariners uh, Certificate of Competency as well. So, absolutely brilliant. And then left the sea uh, about 11 years ago and tried my hand at teaching. Really enjoyed teaching the cadets whilst on board. Uh, so I thought I'd try my hand at that. And now I've found my way to be well, which is absolutely great. And just looking at some of the other questions there. When, when do you have intakes? So, like I said, 
sponsored cadetships generally start in September or in January or February. There's generally two intakes a year. So you need to, to apply for those. You need to get in touch with sponsoring companies for sponsored cadetships. So find more about which companies you can apply to, if you like, send your CVs and covering letters to, is have a look on either the college website, have a look at our website, we've got links there, and also there's something called the Careers at Sea website, so careersatsea.org, and the MNTB, Merchant Navy Training Board, mntb.org. Loads of links there to sponsoring companies, information about Career at Sea. Uh, get yourselves applying then. I would say if you're looking to get sponsorship for September, start applying now, get your CV sent off. The earlier you do it, and I would write off to every company you can. What I did back in when I did it, I just wrote to every company. Yes, I might have had my heart set on. I don't know, some people like have the heart set on cruise ships because it looks a bit more exotic. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. All you want is that professional certificate at the end of it. it doesn't matter whether you work on a cruise ship or a container ship or an oil tanker. When you're a sponsored cadet, you come out with the same qualification at the end. So right off to all the companies. Fingers crossed you get some opportunities for interviews and shine at the interviews, yeah? Read up on that company. You know what they do. If they're an oil tanker company, know what a VLCC is, for example, a very large food carrier. Try and know a little bit of the terminology. Know the ranking system, the progression routes within the Merchant Navy. Throw an interest. Um, what else have we got here? Yeah. Where did I go on my uh, first trip to sea? Like I said, joined in Southern Europe, flew to the Spezia in Italy. Fantastic. Uh, funny story behind that, but I won't share that with anyone. Uh, well, well, why not, eh? The company I worked for had paid for me flights. Um, at the time, I was living in Teesside, so from Teesside Airport down to Heathrow, I was flying down to uh, from Heathrow to Italy, and I didn't realise at the time that the company paid for your uh, internal flight. So I got myself a National Express bus all the way down to Heathrow uh, for a bloody fourteen hours when all I could have done was sit on a flight for forty-five minutes. But hey ho, you live and learn, and that's what we're here for here at the college to to help you prepare for that. Uh, anything that can help me. I'm just reading a question here. Anything that can help me uh, with applications? I suppose just uh, at sea, to help you with applications. Yeah, we'll help you when you're on our pre cadet program. Uh, to get on the pre cadet program, please visit the college website. Uh, links there will help you out. We'll get you an interview booked in. Uh, so for the pre cadet program through the college website. Uh, if you've got any other questions, well, I'm just wary of the time now. There's only about 90 seconds left of my allotted time here. Is if you've got any other questions that I haven't been able to answer or you think of later on, uh, we've got some of our my colleagues are on what we call live chat on via the college website. So we've got my college uh, Terry Moody, who's uh, who will talk about the deck programs, and there's two other colleagues. Uh, talking about the engineering programs, if you've got an interest in engineering. Uh, but why Why would you want to be a marine engineer when you could be a navigator? That's all I would say to that. Uh, Scott, question just popped up there. Uh, is 25 too old to join the pre-cadet course? No, not at all. So it's any age, there's no age limit on it. So generally speaking, the pre-cadet course is for 16 to 18 year olds. But we have had more mature learners on that. If you've got an interest in it and you want to know about it, there's no age limit on the pre cadet chip. So just get on the website and put your application in. We have had more mature, I say more mature, uh, candidates, students in their 20s on it previously. And they've gone on to sponsored cadet chips. Same with sponsored cadet chips. There's no age limit, really. It's up to the company themselves. Uh, so just 
Uh, well, guys and girls, I'd like to thank you very much for your time and listening to my uh, my drone. See you later now. Bye-bye.